Okay, today's recipe is a powerhouse of Cantonese cuisine. You've probably heard of it before. This is how you can make your own exo sauce. You might think the exo sauce is centuries old, like a lot of the other sauces in Chinese cooking, the wines and vinegars and soy sauces and stuff, but exo sauce is actually a very recent thing. It only came about in the 1980s. The name exo comes from the cognac, the extra old cognac that was very popular in Hong Kong at the time. And it got its name because exo sauce is supposed to be a collection of all of the most expensive ingredients from all around China. And of course that means it itself is very, very expensive. I always think that with expensive dishes and ingredients, it's always best to make them yourself because once you go out and you buy it at a restaurant or you buy it from a shop, there's always a margin added on top. So if you can make your own exo sauce at home, you're gonna get a much better quality product. These are the ingredients that go into it. It starts off with some really good seafood. And the main ingredient I think are these. These are dried scallops. Dried scallops are phenomenally expensive. These are about $300 a kilo. So this is about 100 grams here, so 30 odd dollars. They can get up to $800 a kilo for the very big ones. You can get cheaper ones like these. These ones are much, much cheaper. You can see that they're much smaller and they're only seven or eight dollars for a packet like this, about 100 grams. I'm gonna use the high quality ones just so you can see the difference. The, the big difference between them is the length of the fiber. So you, you break this apart, you can see these little fibers here that have lengthened out. But you can see the high quality ones, fibers are much, much longer. So you can tell a really good exo sauce by kind of how expensive the scallops have been used in it. And you can tell that by how long the length of the fibers of the scallops you can see. Got some dried shrimp as well. These are again, the kind of more expensive version. The larger the dried shrimp you find, the more expensive they tend to be. I'm using these kind of expensive large ones here, but you can use the very small dried shrimp as well. There's no problem with that at all. First thing I need to do is actually just put these into a bowl and get some hot water over the top of them. While that's softening, I'll get onto my other ingredients. I've got some prosciutto here. You might think that prosciutto is a bit of an odd ingredient to put into a Chinese sauce, but curing ham has a very, very long history in China, far longer than you get in Italy even. It goes back six, 7,000 years. And the most famous hams in China are again, very, very expensive from places like Yunnan and Jinhua. So prosciutto, if you can't get those Yunnan or Jinhua style hams where you are, is a very, very good substitute. I'll just shred that very finely. A few other fresh ingredients here. I've got some shallots, some garlic, and some large red chilies. I'll start with the chilies, and I just want to take the seeds out of those because I don't need the seeds for these in the dish. Of course, the best way to do that just split it in half and run a spoon down the center to pull those seeds out. You probably don't know it, but on this YouTube channel, I always keep a bowl just off to the side of camera for all of these scraps. It's very useful to do rather than running backwards and forwards to a bin every time you want to get rid of something. Then I'll just slice these chilies into small pieces. Garlic too. Now some shallots too. There's a lot of cutting and goes into a good exo sauce, but it is worth it. Okay, everything's chopped. And you can see how these have kind of softened in their liquid as well. So I just want to break these up. I used to, back when I first started making exo sauce, break all of these little individual fibers apart by hand, but I found a much, much better way of doing that. Just take these out of their soaking liquid and don't throw that liquid away. It's got a lot of flavor in it and you just give these a pound with a mortar and pestle, and it immediately starts to break all of those fibers apart. And this is kind of the result. These little threads of dried scallop, well, not so dried anymore because they've been reconstituted. But I'll pound this a little bit more and I'll just throw that together with the prosciutto. And the prawns as well. Now, obviously the dried shrimp don't have fibers to break up into, but I still want to put them into this mortar and pestle and just break them up a little bit because I don't want big prawns in there. I want to show that I've used the big prawns because they do have a lot of flavor and they are very luxurious, but I don't want them to sort of spoil the texture of all these other ingredients going in there. 
So I want to leave them quite chunky, but just a bit of a mix together in here so they start to roughen up on the edges. Okay, this looks pretty good now. The prawns are still in big pieces, but they're kind of flossy around the outside and that's gonna be a really nice texture in the exo sauce. I can see you thinking that this is a very expensive sauce, and it is, and this is kind of the ultra, ultra premium version using the very expensive dried scallops, very expensive dried prawns. But if you used cheaper scallops and cheaper prawns, this whole thing would be a, a $10 jar of exo sauce. Right now we're probably tapping on about $70 worth of exo sauce here, but I don't use it all the time, just for a few very, very special dishes. You know, if I'm making lobster noodles or serving it with some very, very nice dumplings, I might have made myself, or even just stir fried with a bit of rice or prawns is really, really, really good. Now for this leftover stock, do not throw this away. It's got huge amounts of flavor in it. What you could do is take this and put it in with another stock and use that as a stock for any other purpose. But I actually like to pour it back in here while it's cooking and help that to evaporate. It makes the cooking time a little bit longer, but it does intensify the scallop and prawn flavor in the exo sauce, as well as these ingredients in the cooking process. There's a couple of seasonings as well. I've got some dark soy sauce, mainly for color, just to darken it up a little bit. A little bit of sugar and some Korean chili. I love Korean chili because it's got a deep red color and also a very smoky chili aroma. So it goes really nicely in the exo sauce. It'll help to turn our oil a really vibrant red. So I'm about ready to go over to the stove. Okay, so I've got about nearly a litre of oil here. It's a good quality blended oil. This is actually a mix of canola and corn oil, but you could just use any regular vegetable oil. I'm gonna start with a little bit of that into the pot. Just on a low to medium heat. I don't wanna cook anything really fast here. This is more about infusing flavour into the oil and cooking things down rather than browning them or cooking them up. So in with my kind of mirepoix ingredients, I guess you could call them, the chilli, the garlic, and of course the shallots. And I just want to cook that slowly for about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Now in with the expensive stuff, the prawns, the dried scallops, and also this prosciutto as well. Now at this point, I want to add in the stock. The stock will actually help soften those things a little bit more, bring a bit more flavor into it, make it a bit more savory. And along with the stock, I'll also add my sugar, dark soy sauce, and the Korean chili powder as well. Now when most of the liquid is evaporated in with the remainder of the oil, now it's just a very, very slow infusion process, not even a cooking process. So I'll turn the heat right down low, and this could be anything from sort of 20 minutes to an hour, or even more, depending on how low your flame goes. You just want it to start to look really jammy and, and thick in consistency, and for the oil to have a lot of nice uh, color and also flavor in it as well, you can give it a bit of a taste. So that, then we'll put it in a jar, keep it in the fridge for anything up to you know, even a few months, six months or so, this will keep in the fridge, and that, it's a homemade exosauce.